What's going on, people? It's Hajimoto with another Umarex Gauntlet tutorial upgrade fixification, whatever we want to call it. But uh, this time around, what we're going to deal with is the bipod. We're going to do the bipod on this one. <clears throat> and as you uh, probably remember, in the previous videos, I did a teardown video and I did um, also I did the regulator visit video, but I'm, I'm going to just I'm going to draw your attention if I can to the way that the gun is configured here. And what we've got here on the bottom here is the stud for the sling. Now this is supposed to be where you want to put a sling, but it's almost at the halfway point of the rifle. And if you ever actually put one on it, it would probably would swing around. It's not. It should be more out at the tip. Um, but but that being said, uh, we're not really talking about the sling uh, capability of it. But that's got to come off in order for you to, uh, to in order for you to take the shroud off. So what we're going to do is I'm going to walk you through a a tutorial today that allows you to put the bipod out here, and it becomes part of the shroud. It's you can take it off. It's not permanently installed, but uh, just so you know, it will it will you'll have to drill a hole right about where my pointer is. So you are going to be modifying the shroud, and as Umarex wants you to know, if any modifications are made to the gun, guys, um, it voids your three-year warranty. So if you were to drill a hole right in this plastic shroud right here, and this trigger assembly falls out of the rifle, you're not covered. So now that we're past that, <clears throat> um, let's talk a little bit, if we can, about um, once you remove the shroud. So from this point, I'm going to assume you know how to take the, the screw out, and then you're going to remove the shroud. And then what we're going to do is install a bipod. Now the bipod that I used for this is one that I got off of Amazon. And the reason that I got it is because it utilizes an, a, an existing swivel stud uh, for your from your sling. And it'll latch onto that. This assembly here, it'll latch onto it. And then this guy cranks down, clamps onto it, and draws up nice and tight. So where this video is going to start is going to start right where I'm unboxing the uh, bipod and then we'll start going through um, how to install it. I will give a link in the video at the bottom of the description of the, the YouTube video. There'll be a link to the bipod here and also through the video you're going to see what you'll need. I can tell you now that what you're going to need is either an 11 16 um, no, you're going to measure 11 16 but we'll, we'll go through it. You'll see the, I'll, I'll list it right in the video here. We'll uh, go through it together and then uh, we'll go from there. I'm going to go ahead and roll the video portion of it and then I'll talk over it so that uh, I can speak through what's going on here. So, so you pull the, the unit out of the box and it'll come in two pieces. One's the actual bipod itself and the other part in the bag is it's made to hook onto a Picatinny rail. It'll either clamp onto the Picatinny rail and then it gives you a swivel stud so that you can then, if you take the bipod off, you can use the piece that I'm holding right now as a swivel stud for your, uh, for your sling. What we're going to do is take it apart so that we can get that swivel unit out because that's what we're going to put into the tank shroud for the, for the gauntlet. So once you have this guy out, this is 8.5 millimeters across, so just a little over 8.5 millimeters. So now that we have that, we're going to take the shroud itself that we have off of the gun, and you're going to measure from the screw, the screw that's closest to the end of the tank on the bottom there, that screw, you're going to measure from that screw towards the front of the gun, either 5 eighths or 11 sixteenths. Either one will work. What I did was put right at uh, 11 sixteenths, Either one of those are fine because you're going to be in between a baffle wall that's inside the plastic and you're not getting any closer to the screw reinforcement plate. So that gives you plenty of room inside. Once you once you see it, you'll drill it, you'll know what I'm saying. So give yourself a mark, dead center of the ridge. Use a quarter inch drill bit as a starter hole or smaller, whichever you're more comfortable with, but, but you don't want to go right to the largest drill bit to get inside of it. Use the smaller one first, and you drill through the plastic. Be careful not to plunge down through so that you don't, you know, bash into the, the drill bit doesn't go bashing into the other side. 
After the starter hole is done, you want to use either an 8.5 millimeter or an 11 30 seconds. The 11 30 seconds is going to be a little loose, the 8.5 is going to be a little tight. So what I did was went 8.5 and then I cleaned it up with a, uh, a, a piece of sandpaper to just get it so that it fits tight. Once your hole's done, from the inside of the shroud outward, go ahead and take the swivel stud and put it through the hole. This portion of the video is going to be me uh, looking like a monkey with a football uh, trying to get the thing to line up. And also the way the camera is, it's pretty tough for me to show it to you, but I'm trying to show you from the inside, but I can't get enough light down in there. But all I'm doing is lining it up with the hole and then I'm going to push it through. What I like to use is I use dental picks and, and uh, different types of pick tools and I'll slide it through the hole and pull it all the way in so it sits down nice and tight. And when you're done, make sure the hole runs left and right across the uh, shroud. Not You don't want the hole running forward and back, you want it to run left and right. Now that it's fully extended and fits in there really, really tightly, we're going to take the bipod itself and we're going to attach it to the stud that's now sticking down. You take the knob on the bipod and back it all the way out so it's sticking all the way out. Remove the little plastic cap they give you and what you'll notice is it's a uh, like a pinch jaw. There, see it? There's a left and a right little tab. Those tabs go through the holes of the swivel stud. So you line those up, get it in place, and then start tightening the knob down. And what you're doing is you're gonna you're gonna keep turning it so you it draws down nice and tight to the uh, plastic shroud. If at any point you ever wanted to take it off, all you would do is back the knob off and then go ahead and take the bipod off and you're good to go. The stud may be able to support a, a sling, but I wouldn't really trust this plastic shroud with the entire weight of the gun. So to use it for a bipod, all it is is the weight of the gun is setting down on it, so there's no issue. But if you were to try to suspend the gun from it, I probably wouldn't do that if I were you. I would just leave it on there as cosmetic. So there we go. The next step, the final step is going to be to put this back on the rifle. You, if you've taken yours off, chances are you know how to put it on. But what I want to do is take a moment here and just pause this because I want to let you know that I spoke to Umarex about the misalignment. You might remember in one of my other videos, I had pointed out that there was a misalignment of the shroud here. And if you look at this, these pictures, I'm going to get pretty close to show you what I mean about the misalignment and how the shroud ends up, ended up making contact with the barrel of the gun. What they said was this screw and the screw that's just like it on the other side from the factory were being over tightened. The recommendation from Umarex was to take this screw and turn it a quarter or a half turn loose so that it would allow this thing to engage properly. And that's what I did here and the thing when we're putting it together. So I'll show you also, here was my other concern is when the weapon was set into a cradle and the, the weight of the gun was allowed to push up on the shroud, what it did was pushed the shroud up against the barrel shroud. And I'll zoom in here to show you exactly what I'm saying. It pushes in and makes contact with it. Right there, you can see it. I'll get even closer here so you can get a better shot of it. You can see the misalignment I was talking about. See how this is kinked? But down here, it all lines up. They say loosening these two screws, one on each side, will help get this lined up with, while the screw is loose. I never actually could. This is me pushing the shroud down. So there's, there's, there's a space around the tank, and I'll go to the front and show you in a second. This is when you let go. See how it's touching the shroud? So from the front, there's now this is what a shim in. All I did was put a shim in the front, a temporary shim. That shim is between the tank and the shroud, and that's holding it down so that it maintains the gap. You can use anything as a shim. You could use a electrical tape, a piece of foam, um, a piece of plastic, a uh, door edge guard, anything that you wanted to put in there um, to keep it open. It's another video for me to show you how I corrected mine. Mine was a little bit more um, elaborate, but what I'm trying to suggest to you is you could even take electrical tape and make a shim so that it sticks to the plastic shroud and just keeps that thing down tight. You don't want the shroud pushing up against the barrel of the gun. Now, the, the way that this thing's set up, please understand that 
the bipod isn't going to cause any more of a problem uh, than the original gun. I mean, that if you took your weapon and set it on top of a rest, it's going to do that. So it's no different than if there was a bipod on here. None at all. So there's no modification. The, the bipod isn't modifying this and which is destroying and making it hit that. It's important that we we get that out of the way because uh, Umarex will then say that the what we just did by putting in the bipod uh, somehow screwed that up. That, that's, that's a poor engineering on their part. It shouldn't be touching the shroud. But once you're done and everything's set up, you're going to put the shroud back together again. And it's you'll see that it comes right off. The bipod is now part of the shroud. Okay. But again, take this knob. And now that we have the stud in there, you can take it, put it on and off without ever taking the shroud off again. And so the way that I do it, these screws are already loose like they suggested. One quarter to one half turn loosened. And now I'm lining everything up. Remember that monkey with the football thing we were talking about earlier? Yeah. Okay, now I lift the gun up, and what I do as a, as a little trick is to use one of my punches or my awls once I get it flipped up here. See the hole? You can see the metal tab down there. I take and put them all in there and draw them together using that to make sure that they're lined properly. I drop that down in there and I draw it nice and tight to make sure that it's in a proper spot before I start to put the fastener in. Now I go ahead and put it in finger tight and then I'll use the same tool to tighten it. Now because the camera is above and it's upside down it looks like I'm loosening it right now but of course you'll be turning it righty tighty lefty loosey. Okay, now it's back on. Everything's good to go. I'm gonna check out the alignment of uh, all the pieces, making sure I don't forget anything. And as you can see, you can see the pressure gauge through the one side, and you see the fill nipple through the other. At this point, it's fully reassembled. And we're gonna go ahead and I'll show you some of the end shots of now that we have it installed. So now that's with the bipod on it, looking from the front. And again, I've got a shroud, uh, I've got a spacer in between this tank and the bottom of this plastic so that this thing is not making contact. The weapon's weight is sitting on top of this right now. And I'll show you a couple of different angles here. And I'm going to zoom in here to prove that the weight of the weapon is down on the bipod, but you can see daylight through here. No problem. So there you go, guys. That is how you go ahead and put yourself a bipod on the Umarex gauntlet and uh, have a little more stability with her. I hope this was informative to you guys and uh, I appreciate you watching. Somebody and if you happen to want to see some of my other stuff that I've done, take a look at these videos over here on the right. You might find something there you like. Take care guys.